Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching today. So I've got a few things to show you this week. First of all, just want to get straight into these. So last week, or uh, the week before maybe, Crafters Companion contacted me and asked if I would like to try the new Classic um, Spectrum Noir markers. These are, I believe, are going to be re going to be replacing the current colouring system markers. So I have quite a few of these. So I've got these ones here and here. Mine aren't in any particular order. Now. There's quite a few reasons why they're doing this and from what I've been seeing on social media and kind of following over the last like couple of weeks is that there's, you know, they've been basically listening to feedback on these ones over the years because, you know, these are fantastic markers. However, there have been, I've read things people have been saying, you know, they've dried up or the nibs aren't wearing well and things like that. So as everything, you, you take that feedback, I guess, and then things evolve from it. So they, these ones here, so let's take them out. So I, I was sent the brights. Now, these ones, from what they say, basically, they're going to be, like I said, replacing the current system. But then I don't, I don't think that means these are just going to disappear. I'm not sure how they're doing that transition. So the inks have been reformulated. All right, so apparently now it's going to be more consistent across the board. The ink flow is supposed to be much better. They've got better nibs, better barrel. I mean that's down to personal preference because I've I actually prefer a triangular barrel. I find that really really comfortable. That's my preferred. However, it's not you know it doesn't bother me if they're not. I still use them. Um, and the colour on the lid is meant to be better as well. So these are the brights. This is the a selection of them here, and you get twelve. And so these are an alcohol-based marker. So you'll want to make sure you use a water-based ink or a hybrid that will work on both. Um, they are really bright, I have been playing around with them and they are in a few tutorials. And yeah, that's basically it. So I just thought I'd just show you them and see how they do kind of work with the last ones that I had. So there are a few where I have the exact like one of, so let me just find. So these ones as well, they have the fine nib and then the chisel nib or the bullet nib yeah the difference is if you've got the aquas they're brush so I always get them the wrong way around so this one here has a brush nib okay whereas these your thicker end is your chisel okay so you should get a nicer blend you shouldn't get the streaking which I don't seem to be getting you do have to let them settle as with all markers but I want to find the ones that I've got the same colors in Okay, so this is the BP3 from the, I guess, the original colouring system markers. This is the same, and they've now got the name of it. So this is Begonia, okay, but it's still the same number. The barrel shapes are, this is slightly more squashed, okay? And then it shows you clearly the, the, the nib that you have on the end. But I want to see just how different these colours are. So let's, one thing I would say is this is a much thicker seal. These are older, like some of them are running out, whereas, oh no. And then let's put this one next to it. And just let them settle. This is looking a little bit darker initially, but then this is running out. I've just gone over that one again. I actually do like having the names. I'm someone that tends to go for a name more. I remember a name rather than a code. So for those of you that like that as well, like I know I've got a sunflower colour in a particular brand. I love it. So I just always go to that sunflower because I know how that's going to look. So codes for me, I've never really kind of used. So yeah, that's going to be happening. I believe these are launching tomorrow. Leanne on Crafters Companion, she is launching them. So she will obviously go into much more detail with loads and loads of demos. But you can see now there is... There is a significant difference. I'm not sure how well it's picking up on camera. That looks more hot pink. That looks more like it's got a purple to it. So if you're starting off with Spectrum Noir and you've never used it before, it's not gonna make any difference to you whatsoever because you'll just be buying these newer ones, I guess. But then I imagine they're gonna have a lot of these that they're gonna be getting rid of as well. So I just, I don't know how that is all going to work, but they are nice. I actually prefer that it's all smooth. Than this but then people do like that for grip it's noticed there which i've never noticed before it does actually have the little images of what the tip is on the end so <laughs> i noticed that straight away on these so that's one thing but can you see there i've never noticed that so that's quite funny um yeah i think with um 
I think with markers you just need to find the ones that you you enjoy the most so they do them in I'm not sure how they're going to be selling these like I said this is a pack of 12 and it's the brights so there will be obviously lots more I would imagine they're going to have like skin tones and your greys they're going to have your subtles there's going to be tons and they do have your little booklet here with the whole color system on there so you've got your chart so for those of you as well that collect them and want to you know tick them all off then it's all there so I know lots of you follow Crafters Companion and I know lots of you will watch Leanne tomorrow with the launch. Like I said, she will obviously explain this in a lot more detail and I will certainly be watching just to see what else she says about it. But that's my initial reaction to them. So that's those markers. Then I also got this stuff here. So I had a voucher for Craft Stash, so I got a few little essentials. So I brought myself some stamp cleaner. I did have another branded one. It was actually one that I got when I was in China, but that's gone. So I needed another one. So this is non-toxic acid-free dabber tops. It's the same as the Stazon ink remover, which is more for removing it off of... You're not meant to use that on your um, stamps, but it's for removing it from your stamping blocks and your platforms and things like that. Whereas this here is your clear stamp cleaner for acrylic and photopolymer stamps. This is friendly on your stamps. So I've got that. There's a few that, like for example here, I mean, that's just a mess, that block. It's just really, really filthy. It's full of Versa, um, Versamark actually. And then I've got some inks there, um, some stamps there that I need to clean. And I've got that massive, great big poppy one, which is covered in um, inks and stuff that I can't get off, it's stained. So that's for that. Then I picked up some clear varnish lacquer. So this is gonna be very similar to my glossy accents, but this is nearly gone. And it's lovely for creating a wet look. And just for creating shine, you can have this as little accents. You can have it as like water droplets. So yeah, clear varnish lacquer. Cosmic Shimmer Lacquer is a clear water-based glaze that is suitable for use with all paper crafts. You can use it as a glue to stick your embellishments down and stuff, but mine's more for a visual effect. So that's that one. Then you've got the Flake and Glitter Glue. This one here, especially formulated to be used with gilding flakes, foils and glitter. Once applied, you, this glue dries in a clear tacky finish. So it's going to be very similar to the Nouveau pen that I've got, but that's why I wanted this because this has got the precision nib. So I want to do some like wording and I want to do some nice borders and things like that with my gilding flakes. So yeah, I think this one's going to be nice. So the Flake and Glitter Glue, Cosmic Shimmer. As always, it will all be linked below. Then, oh, love this one. This is Sparkling Snow Wow Embossing Powder. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And it is just a lovely white, but inside, I don't know how well it's picking up, but it's just got sparkle through it. It's just really, really pretty. So I've got my white, my opaque white, which I love, but I thought I wanna you know, have this snow effect. I think with my artificial snow and this and the Christmas projects, I think it's gonna look lovely. Then I've also picked up this here, which is the Christmas light trim. I think they had this last year as well. It's just really, really nice. And it's gonna go in one of my cards for my miniature kind of scenes because they're really tiny little Christmas lights. And you actually get a lot more than I thought. So you get three meters. Christmas light trim. I'll probably end up buying another one of these as well because they just look so nice. And because they're so small, they're perfect for your cards, but also your 3D crafts as well. So yeah, they're gonna be used soon. Then I've got this one. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. So this is the paper tree. So it's the same company as the paper as the paper boutique, which is the other one that I really like to buy. So I've got the five by five. These are the sentiment topper pads. And in here is just that. Every one is a topper. So if you wanted to just put that on a five and a half by five and a half card base with a mat underneath, there's your card all done for you. I'm going to be incorporating this into mini albums. And also I I think I want to try and do like some nice big gift tags and I always like to look at alternative ways. So I'm going to use them on gift bags as well. Um, and I just think they're gorgeous. I just love the images. Seasons greetings. Let the magic of Christmas bring you joy. Warm, cozy winter wishes. You've got to have a Robin. Jingle all the way. He's just so sweet. Believe in the magic of Christmas. Let it snow this holiday season. Look at that one, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Who doesn't love a, a rabbit in a Christmas jumper? And then Merry Christmas is back to the beginning again. So let me just check that was, yeah. So you get eight designs. 
yeah, eight designs, but I don't know how many, oh, 64 sheets, yeah, so you do the maths. There's that one, and then to go with it, it's the Christmas tale, by the way, I've got the paper kit, always love to get the kits, so with this one you get 40 sheet paper pad, and then you get your 32 die cut toppers. Wait till you see these toppers, OMG, they are just so cute. So these here, so you get two, as always, you get two in the same, okay? So we've got, and these are all pre-die cuts, so they just pop out there. You just have to cut up, you know, kind of file away the little pips there. But you've got the Winter Wishes, special couple, just magical. And again, it's those same little um, animals. And then you've got this one here. These are gorgeous. I love the floral detail on there. So that's those two, and they're square. Yeah, and then you've got these. Oh, look at the polar bear. Holiday Wishes, let it snow, it's Christmas. I mean, that though you could get away on not, you know, doesn't have to. So these are perfect for Christmas birthdays as well, I think. That's why they're so nice. And then this one here. I'm going to be making up, like, I think card kind of kits and then my friends usually buy them and then they give them out to their friends and family. So I'm going to look forward to making some of these. These are circle ones. These would look lovely as little decorations. You could, you know, double them up or you could do the spinner card that I done with the other kit like this. But if you put them back to back, put some nice ribbon, put some you know other bits in between and you could have little tree decorations with them and stuff and put them in cards you know if you if you just want to send a little gift to someone maybe that lives far away they're always nice ideas there's that one here you've got tags so these are great on cards but they're also perfect to use actually on your presents so and you can write on the back so it's just plain white and then look at these huge tags these are absolutely gorgeous I just I saw them on there but you just until you actually see it I just didn't realize that's how big they are but how lovely are they? They've got the hole there as well. Put some nice ribbon on there. I'd mat it probably with a nice, I don't know, a mirrored cardstock of some kind. Maybe a nice silver would be nice around that. And um, add some sprigs and foliage and things like that. I think they will look really, really, really special. So that's all of those. And then you get your papers. Papers are gorgeous. You can see an overview there. Love that little house scene. You've got your holly. And again, 40 sheets. And I think it's four of each that you get, that's lovely. And it's the same but smaller. So you know, you got your, your gift tag there. You know, and you could have that framed around it, or have that on the card with a big, it's just endless, endless ideas. Yeah, and then it repeats. Like I said, four of each I think it is, lovely. So that's going to be used. Then I have picked up, so last week I showed all of those lovely Nouveau mousses that I picked up from the charity shop. I have been using them. I've been using them for a lot of commission work and I went back into that charity shop a few days later and there's no more in there. So we just have to wait again now. But I thought I want to get some, some, some different kind of stencils and I've picked up these ones here. So these are by Creative and this one just has that lovely flower detail all over it's like a daisy kind of flower it could be any flower but I thought if I use this one here so this is the cosmic brown but it's, it's more like a coppery kind of color or did I say was that the copper or was that the copper oh no I don't know actually well either then no I think that one I prefer this was more of a goldy kind of color I just think that's going to look so oh, lovely really luxurious on that and I might actually do it on mirrored card socks you've got the mirrored background and then the mirror of you know the shine from the mousse so yeah again you will see all that in due course and there is that one there that's a geometric stencil I thought that's quite nice for male cards and then I've got the black there or black ash that on there like a real monochrome against the white I think will look really kind of cool so that's that one and then I picked up some embossing folders. So I wanted more background ones. So I picked up the bark and this one is gonna look lovely for Christmas. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what this looks like on craft card, but I'm gonna ink it up before I run it through. So I get that, all that pattern there in like a darker brown. And then this, the deboss side will show the craft card. So it should create a really nice authentic-ish looking bark background. And also I think this is gonna look really good for gift boxes. So that's my ideas for the bark for Christmas projects. And then the snake skin. I've seen, oh, I want to say, oh, Louise and, oh gosh, I think there was three of you that used a snake skin for the designer handbag. And I thought that is a really, really lovely idea. So I found this snake skin one. It's five by seven, so it's going to be perfect for cards. But I did think as well, how lovely would that look as a designer handbag? So if you've missed that tutorial and you're wondering what I'm on about, I'll link it up here. 
wonderful tutorial and so many of you have made amazing variations of it honestly they've just been even I've double looked and thought oh my god is that is that a real one <laughs> so yeah they were awesome but yeah you can see it there really nice and then it's one of those real basic things I think I'm always I've got happy birthday dies but they're either very small or they're a real fancy font I saw this one here and this is the creative expressions this is by Sue Wilson and I looked at the measurements and I thought that's actually quite a nice size so the largest is 10.5 by 2.5 centimeters and the smallest is 8 by 2.5 and you can see there just how lovely they are and it's perfect for cards whether it's five by seven or six by six or even smaller, but five by seven and six by six are my preferred size. It's just a lovely size die. And the, the, the font, like I said, is just a timeless font. So yeah, I grabbed that and it was only 2 dollars something like that. It was very inexpensive and she does other ones as well. So I'll probably end up getting a few more because the amount of times I just want something that's actually quite simple in terms of font and, that kind of thing but I never really had that size that I just that, that perfect size and I know I've got my Cricut but there's I've said before there's something about a die cut which a Cricut which a, a cutting machine can't do and I like the finish that a die gives so yeah picked up those ones and then I just got some essentials so I've picked up some more heat resist acetate because I've got some really nice fun tutorials coming up with that so it's the crafters companion it's the one I had before so I do like this one so that's that you get 15 sheets and I think this was only about 3 99 something like that. I thought that was quite good for 15 sheets. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> I'm sure I remember looking at it. And then I think that was right, because then I got the normal acetate, and this is 9 by 12, and this was 7 99 I think. But you get 20 sheets, and it's a bigger size. It's not A4. So there's your A4 over the top. And I just like the fact that it was 2 inches, because that's going to work really well with the 12-inch cardstock. So, yeah, and you can see me there. Hello. <laughs> and then finally I picked up this because I don't have a glass mat and I, I actually don't want a glass medium you know media mat because I, I hate working on glass I just I never have liked it I had a chopping board which I would use for blending and stuff like that but there's something for me uh, just I don't know maybe it's just you know we, we don't like some people don't like cotton wool when it's rubbed together and think, I just don't like working on glass it just doesn't feel comfortable for me so I love, you You would have always seen these right from day one, I've always had some form of a self-healing mat because for me, you know, I do a lot of 3D projects, I'm always using, a, you know, a knife in some stage and just the glue and everything. I know it gets marked and stained on this, but for me, that's what I prefer. But when I do my inking, I found that the mats I had were quite small and I, it just wasn't giving me enough room because... I was inking right where my card was and I would sometimes get ink all underneath the card so I thought right I'm going to get something that is of a similar size to a glass media mat and this is the A3 ink blending mat so it is just a nice thick I don't know what the actual just as it's solvent resistant ink stays wetter longer and seamless blending it's by creative expressions so you'll see there see how shiny it is and it also says here, for smooth ink application to your project, simply apply a small amount of ink directly to the mat, which is what I wanted. Yep, smooth ink over this, and you will find you will find you do not need to re-ink your mat for a good deal of time, and the ink remains workable, just like a glass mat. Okay, so if you've got a glass mat, you don't need this at all. But if you are like me and you just always use this, and it's just easy for me to store as well, so I can just rinse it off at the end of the you know the project because I do have. This is what you would have seen me use. How bad's that? I haven't even cleaned it. Um, but it's just too small. You can see the difference. So I was like, my card was here, my ink was here, and I was just getting, I found it, it was just getting in a mess. And this was just something I picked up from a pound shop. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's okay, but it, um, I totally forgot I put that away like that. Actually, I'm gonna leave that out so I get it cleaned. Um, but it just wasn't, it's just not big enough. So I picked this up and I think it was 3.99. So again, I can just, it's easy to store away. And uh, yeah, it's what I prefer. So, so that's everything. So look out for some lovely tutorials using this here. Can't wait. I'm now starting to get into Christmas a bit more, which is, still can't believe I'm saying that in September anyway. But um, my years of working in retail, I'm very used to having Christmas early because we would already be preparing our Christmas kind of windows and all that kind of stuff. So I, I totally get it. And I know why companies do it. 
but um, I've not done it on my channel this early ever, so, but I'm starting to get into it a bit more. So yeah, those very soon with these. These embossing folders all year round, but you're gonna see the bark for Christmas projects. And then these stencils, I'm just, yeah, I'm trying to get more into stenciling and embossing folders. So I did touch on it a while back. Um, and it's something, when you use them, you forget just how great they are. So I am, I've got them actually in a better place. They're just to the right of me in a drawer. So it's so easy now for me to get as well. So I'm remembering they're there. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning <laughs> and uh, yeah, the well powder as well. And then yeah, the lovely markers. So I hope you've liked it. Everything will all be linked below as always. And I'll be back tomorrow with another tutorial. Thanks for watching, bye.